Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be doing some planting over here on the southeast corner of our new property, which in the future we'll be referring to as the outer loop and the inner loop, I think. I don't know. It'll make sense in about a year when we have our big grass pathway all planted and it looks a little bit more together. But this is what we're starting with today. These grasses are magnificent. Like I have never seen grasses this big in nursery containers ever, ever. Let me pull one out. I've got, uh, let's see, how many do I have in here? Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven of these to put in the ground. They're called totem pole panicums. I have one planted in our, um, like closer to our house and I've had it in the ground for a couple of years and I don't even think that one might be about the same size as these. So these have some age on them and they are awesome. So we will lose a little bit of size when we put them in the ground today, of course. Uh, so they'll go what, like a foot into the ground. Um, but in the end at maturity, they grow six feet tall. So taller than me, whew, taller than me and 30 inches wide. That is an enormous grass and they grow very upright, very structured. Um, so they're gonna provide a really amazing texture out here. And I love kind of this steel gray, blue kind of color that the leaves are. And then you can see the seed heads that they produce. Just very, just gorgeous. I'm so excited about it. So I think what we're gonna do, you can see I was already messing around with uh, kind of where I wanted to place them, but they're so top heavy, I, they kept falling down. So I kind of put them all back in the, the gator there. Uh, so I think I'm gonna do two groupings of three, and then I've got that one extra that I'll kind of tuck back in a smaller area. Um, but my hope is that these produce, I mean, in the end, I think if I put three together, they'll look like a very big, structure out here and when you're planting in a large space you really have to plan to make things look big because the space is like a vacuum it just gobbles stuff up really quick so you have to plan to put a lot of things or big things to really make a statement um, so I'm thinking like let me do my little trio here and hopefully they stay put and don't fall down they're a zone four through nine so very winter hardy and incredibly low maintenance uh, all you have to do with these is cut them back um, Typically, I cut big ornamental grasses like this down in late fall because when they're so tall, if you get a lot of snow, they can be kind of a mess. You know, that snow will weigh, weigh down all of their branches and such. Um, but for smaller ornamental grasses or areas that are more mild that don't get a ton of, of snow, you can leave them up for really pretty winter structure. I might stake mine so that I can leave them up through the winter. Okay, so I'm thinking like a little trio here. Something like that, maybe. So in the end, you know, they'll be, they'll be good size. And they're back enough, like far enough away that I can do some other things, some smaller shrubs and maybe, I don't know, perennials out here. I was kind of thinking I was only gonna do evergreens, trees and shrubs out here. And then, you know, things like the perennials, like grasses that are very low maintenance. But I might put some like full sun loving like Russian sage and some echinacea, stuff like that, um, that are really tough and that can handle the conditions out here. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here. The next trio is gonna be right up here, but I think we should maybe get these in the ground while I have all the supplies. I brought out the auger and some starter fertilizer. Got the big guns for this project. Okay, stay upright. these grasses do well in poor soil because <laughs> I feel like they're gonna have to handle quite a bit out here in terms of wind exposure they can handle clay they can handle all kinds of stuff so I'm hopeful okay I think we're gonna let Aaron do the next few holes <laughs> but that looks good I'm excited all right switch me Aaron <laughs> You made it look a lot easier than I made it look. Is that good? Is that deep enough? That's great, yes. Power stance. Before we plant these, I'm just gonna set them in their holes. Oh, I just knocked a bunch of soil into that hole, hold on.
You know, it's gonna be really interesting to see how things do long-term out here in the soil because, you know, our cut flower garden, this is our second year and everything does fantastic, but everything in there, they're all annual crops. So they don't have to live in the soil for more than a season. And if you come in close on this hole, Erin, let me show everybody what the, our soil looks like. The side of that hole. It's like a hard clay coffin for these poor root balls. Anyway, I mean, it does soften up a bit with irrigation. So I'm just hoping if we just keep on conditioning the soil, I'm hoping things do well. And that's why it's nice to put things that are just a tough, sturdy plant. Okay, set these in here. Stand back and take a look. It looks pretty. You know, trios are interesting though, because they only really look good from certain angles until they get bigger to me. That looks really pretty. I love it. Okay, I've got my starter fertilizer and my compost in the gator and we'll get these in the ground. I'm interested to see what these root balls look like because with the grass this big, typically they're pretty root bound. Not horrible, honestly. Rough it up a little bit. It's supposed to be 106 today too. It doesn't feel so bad right now. Mid morning right now. We've got a little bit of smoke cover. Uh, we're getting the smoke from fires. I don't know how close they are to us. Not terribly close, but um, it is providing a little bit of protection, making it a little bit cooler. Okay, so we have four more grasses to plant and I do need to run irrigation to each one of the grasses as well, which I just found that this line runs right by these, which is so nice. I won't have to run my line very far. So we'll get that done and then we'll show you what they all look like. Oh my goodness, you guys, I absolutely love seeing these out here because they already create such a huge statement because they're so big. I still need to water these in. Uh, and then after today, the drip system will pick up and take off and water them for me. Um, so I made sure that around the base of each one of these grasses, there's a ring of the brown quarter inch drip line. And I made sure that each one of them has eight emitter holes, each which emit half gallon per hour. Uh, so we should get a very even coverage of water around each one of these grasses. And I think from this angle, you can see this group and the grouping over there. And then with that seventh grass, we popped it over on the other side, kind of close to a black lace elderberry. Yeah, babe, you need help? Benjamin came out to help us for this last part here. Here you go, bud. And that's pretty much it for today's video. I just was so excited about these grasses and they're just so incredible right now that I was really looking forward to showing you guys. It's really fun for me when I can plant something that's already so close to its mature size. So you can really have a good idea of what to expect it to look like, what you can expect it to look like in your own space. And everything's doing pretty well out here. I'm really encouraged so far, like in terms of our water system, how often we're watering um, and how we've run our 
drip system because it's kind of all new out here. Um, and I thought we were gonna have to do a lot more adjusting and maybe you've had to do more than I know about. <laughs> but I, everything seems to be doing well so far. Um, you can see that we have some wood chips in here uh, and we've got a pile over there, um, which we've just been kind of spreading wood chips as the tree service has dropped them off. Uh, and so it's just kind of a nice way to help suppress. We don't intend on doing it long term. Um, in fact, it's kind of nice because like the last load they brought, the tree was half alive and half dead. So I think we have a good mix of green and browns in that one pile. So it kind of is, it's nice because it's not all a, a carbon rich. It's got some nitrogen and stuff in it already. So that's gonna be kind of nice to spread, but it's been nice just for short term to help with a little bit of weed suppression, uh, keeping the powdery dirt from flying everywhere. And then uh, after this, we'll probably take off, as soon as we've got more stuff in here, uh, we'll mulch with something a little bit finer uh, and maybe a little bit darker. But so far, so good. We're really happy with it out here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Can't wait to show you more and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.